Welcome back to Fab Fun. Glad to have you with us. Thanks for tuning in. I was at the Farm Machinery Expo in Louisville, Kentucky, and got to check out a lot of tractors and equipment. So if you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned, and we will talk about some of the equipment and tractors that we came across with a little bit of commentary. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let's get going. One of the first booths that I came to was Jenkins Iron and Steel. They had some tractor attachments, particularly grapples that looked really nice. Here's a two jaw grapple. It has some round tines that are replaceable. So if you start to bend one, you can take it out. You see the little pins in the back? Should be pretty easy maintenance taking care of this grapple as you can be pretty rough with it it looks very well made they had other attachments as well I really liked that they marked their price on each piece of equipment so you know what it would cost to get it shipped to you I think that shows some confidence in their product because they had pricing marked next to their competitors booths so you can walk from one to the other compare and see pricing uh, I really like that show some faith in their product and I also really liked that their product is made in the United States one of my favorite booths to go to is Coyote they always have a very nice booth very inviting they have staff there to answer questions they have a wide range of products that they display from tractor loader backhoes, small subcompacts to more medium compact size and even some bigger tractors. Uh, I think there was one or two utility class tractors there. Um, really nice product offering. I think that's pretty cool. A lot of tractors are being displayed with uh, these new tires, the R14s. I think I zoom in on that in a little bit. Uh, but those are getting to be more common. Here's a nice, nice hydro model. Everything's cleaned up and shiny, looks good, good booth. Nice comfortable carpet to stand on all day. Very inviting, very cool. Uh, they had side-by-sides there. They had, I'm uh, going around one now, looks very nice. Nice four-seater, could be a six-seater I guess. There's a subcompact with a backhoe. They have a skid steer. And they had some mowers here you'll see in just a little bit. All of their products look very high quality. The fit and finish on everything looks very nice. Uh, the options that you get for the price point, I think they're great. I just wish they were out there a little bit more. So it's nice to see Coyote grow. I think when you have somebody enter the marketplace and start to grow and expand and offer more products, more volume, more dealerships, I think the end user always wins. It just gives them more options and it keeps everybody else competitive. There's a close up on those R14s. Nice box blade. The rear end on these uh, mid size and smaller compacts looks pretty heavy duty to me. The booth is very well put together. There's a nice tiller on a cab model. There's a utility class tractor with a cab. Um, Great product offering here from Coyote. I'm glad to see these guys grow. I think more and more people are becoming familiar with the tractor as a brand and each individual model. I'm getting to see more and more of those out in the marketplace. So we've got some fellow YouTubers about the size of my channel that have Coyotes and love them. So I think we'll continue to see this brand grow. Uh, looking at the back of the utility class tractor here, I really like the way these uh, three-point hitches are engineered with the hydraulic cylinders on the outside. Uh, they're not all tucked away or internal to the rear end. I think that's pretty cool. I think it'd be better on maintenance if you start to have a leak. And um, you know, if it's part of the design, I think it's actually going to help when you can get the hydraulics out closer to the point that's being lifted. It's going to increase your power and I think Coyote, for the size of their tractors, uh, comparing to a tractor of a similar size. In a different brand they usually have a stronger three-point lift and uh, higher loader lift capacity 
they're not doing a great job at putting their branding and model numbers where they're visible. Uh, it seems like some of those designs are made before they engineer the loader and where it's going to set. But, you know, some of those real small things will get fixed later on. Overall, very good looking tractors. Lots of options. A lot of these tractors have standard features that would be a more expensive option on other brands. Another great booth to attend is the Mahindra booth. They put together a very nice show here as well. They've got the same kinds of offerings uh, for the most part where you've got the compact tractors, subcompact, here's a nice tractor with a loader and backhoe. And another nice thing that I like about Mahindra is they often put their prices on the tractors. MSRP is clearly listed on every model that I saw. Now whether or not that's a good price, that's up to you guys to decide. But it is nice to see a manufacturer clear and upfront about the pricing for each model. I know the look of the tractor is not going to be for everybody, but it's starting to grow on me. I like the way they look. Kind of a odd alien looking grill and headlight assembly there. Eh, to each their own. I think it's kind of cool. Definitely like the red. Some R1 tires on this utility class tractor with a cab. Most of the smaller ones have R4s. And Mahindra looks to have pretty heavy rear ends in their tractors. Uh, pretty good on weight from when I looked it up. I think uh, most of the tractors for the size and horsepower, Mahindra made heavier tractors than a lot of other brands. More iron and steel in their tractors than some of their competitors. I think this is about a mid-size compact, maybe close to a B-series on Kubota. Has a cab, I'm assuming heat and air, and you're looking at $40,000, it's 1640, so a little bit bigger than a B-series. I do not like the rocker pedals, but that's just my preference. Actually, don't really like hydrostatic that much, but again, not everybody agrees with me. It's nice to have the uh, backhoe stretched out so you can see what kind of reach it has. A little different grill and headlight design on this tractor. I think Mahindra gets their tractors in different places. Uh, like, I thought they carried some Iseki stuff there for a while. They might have TYM making a couple of different sizes. When I was looking hard at tractors and had considered some of the compacts, they don't source their tractors all in one place. And there's several brands that can mix up their sourcing uh, in different, different ways. So, uh, if you really start digging into stuff, you'll learn that pretty quickly. Not everything labeled with one particular brand was made by that brand. Loaders look to be very heavy duty. Plenty of welding and, and gussets and reinforcements in different areas. As long as you have a good local dealer, I would not be afraid to get a Mahindra. And that's a pretty good price. 5145 is nice, heavy, entry level. I would call it entry level utility class tractor. Maybe not as much horsepower as what some people are looking for, but a good, durable tractor for taking care of a homestead or maybe just a supplement for a small farm. And that brings us to one of my favorite parts of the Mahindra booth the Roxor. Roxor, Roxor, however you want to say it. It's kind of a Jeep imitation, competing with some side-by-sides for people who want something a little bit more old-fashioned, but uh, not too old-fashioned. You've got, I think is a four-cylinder turbo diesel. You've got straight axles. I think it's a five-speed and probably a two-speed transfer case. Leaf-sprung suspension, not going to ride like a long-travel 
independent suspension side by side, but I think it's going to be a, a little bit tougher, a little bit heavier duty than most of your side by sides. Really reminiscent of a CJ Jeep, except you've got a turbo diesel as a power plant. See a different stick there for the transfer case, what I believe is a five speed, and pretty simple dash. I like these things. If I had a lot of disposable income, I would really consider buying one. I might have to learn how to shut the door, though. How you doing today? All right, how you doing? Doing well. Ten and a half total capacity. Dual hydraulics. All of them in the series has the live hydraulic hose. This particular model, the smallest one, is the only one that has the hand pump option as well, too. How big do they go? Uh, go all the way up, we make one, well, off-road ones go up to eight ton. Wow. And we've got a 10 ton that's road ready for, uh, with lights, license, title, you can. This is, this is probably the most versatile one where you can, you know, if you've got something without your live hydraulics, you can use a hand pump, two hitches, Pendle hitch is kind of hidden under there. We built it to where you put whichever hitch you're not using down inside the frame. Two inch ball coupler hitch. So you can go behind your tractor or go behind your pickup, side yeah. to side. Dual action tailgate. Right now, if you pull this, I'll just do it for you. Watch okay. tailgate. Tell me about the, uh, the axles. They are dual tandem axles, so they are like a walking type axle. So it looked like it was on a pivot yep. there, yeah. Yep. So that plus your hitch at the front is a pivot inside of the, the collar, so, so it, it will pivot. Change, pivot. Right? Yep. And then your uh, again the, the uh, axles are walking type, so uh, we got it down in the woods or on a deer path or cutting woods. It's less apt to. Uh, it's more. Adaptable to terrain as you're going over and less apt to uh, fall off one way or the other. So how how big do these go and maintain the same style of suspension? Um, I'll show you in the catalog. We go from a two and a half. Mark did a good job at uh, Keen Cutter. Very knowledgeable. Very excited about the product. Thanks for the demo on the dump trailer. Moving on to LS tractor. Here we have a utility class tractor, cab, self-leveling loader. Looks pretty nice. You'll see those R14 tires. Probably one of the bigger units that you'll see with those tires available on it. They look good. I don't know how they hold up versus an R1 or how much better they are than an R4. But uh, LS has got a lot of models out there and I'm excited to see them grow and take a more substantial place in the market. I did visit the John Deere booth, looked at some of their smaller tractors, and did happen to run into Tractor Time with Tim. I turn back right here and you'll see, I think his wife is talking to somebody, and boom, there's Tim talking to a John Deere rep. John Deere had a very, very nice booth. Lots of units to check out, lots of things to climb up on and get your kid's picture taken. Uh, and lots of stuff to look at for the people who are interested in buying a tractor or a piece of equipment. One of the cool things is an older tractor. I like the retro ones. I think some of the older tractors look better than the newer ones. Here's a perfect example.
TYM also had tractors on display, subcompacts, compacts, getting into utility class, cabs, nice loaders, interesting tractors. You see those on YouTube. Uh, RK tractors are also made by TYM, so getting to see more and more of these tractors as time goes on, and once again, I like competition, so... As a consumer, we win when the manufacturers have to compete with each other. New Holland had some big equipment on display. Bigger stuff than what I'm going to buy. Also had some small compacts. Seeing cabs on smaller and smaller tractors. Guess everybody wants to be comfortable. Kubota had a lot of equipment on display. You have mowers, you've got some attachments, big tractors, medium sized tractors, small tractors. And they had a lot of traffic at their booth as well. Finally came to the Massey Ferguson booth. Well, it's an Agco booth. Uh, Agco owns Massey Ferguson, and they had subcompacts, compacts, utility class tractors, big tractors, and different kinds of equipment here. Really like their booth. I do have a personal bias because I have a 2607H, which was also on display. I was excited to see that because I don't think the Heritage Series gets enough representation. I really like the tractor. It's a great economical way to get into a utility class tractor. Mine has been great for me. It's heavy, um, good sized tractor, but it also sits fairly low and can be positioned out to be wider. And that was exactly what I was looking for on my property. And if I were to upgrade my Massey Ferguson 2607H, I'd be looking at the 4707. This is the 4710 with a cab. They locked it so I couldn't climb in there and get comfortable, but the same frame size as the 4707. This one's got wheel weights on it, and I think it had a batwing mower here behind it, but the 4707 is probably a little bit bigger than what I need, but it's a cool looking tractor. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time. Have fun.